You know, I sympathize with the, with the Occupy people from this standpoint. They're sensing, and we know it too, the system's broken. Um, but it's broken for different reasons than I think their prescriptions um, are, are saying. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Chris Littleton, a Tea Party leader from Ohio and the head of Ohioans for Healthcare Freedom. Chris, thanks for talking to us. Great, thanks so much, Nick. You're running a political action committee to promote the passage of the Ohio Healthcare Freedom Amendment, which is going to be on the ballot on uh, this November. What would a yes vote on the amendment accomplish? A yes vote basically creates what we say is healthcare freedom uh, in Ohio, and it accomplishes two things very directly. One, we make sure that nothing like the Massachusetts-based system, which is a compulsory system, can come to Ohio. So while we could certainly create a state-based system, compulsory participation would never be possible Okay, in Ohio. so you want to amend the uh, Constitution of Ohio to say no individual mandate at the state level. It, that's exactly right. And the second thing that it does, and we were very conscious of this in crafting, is it gives us a really unique standing because this was citizen-initiated um, to have a very unique case move to the U.S. Supreme Court to question the actual constitutionality of the individual mandate from the federal health care bill on a rights-based case, which is something that's very unique. Okay, so uh, because the Supreme Court is clearly going to be hearing the individual mandate at some point, so you think that by having a constitutional amendment in place, you will actually have a, a better standing to argue uh, the case against the mandate at the national level. Very much so, and one of, one of the reasons why is because, one, this was citizen-initiated, which is very unique. So assuming that this is citizen-initiated, voted on by citizens uh, on November 8th, and assuming that it passes, it will be the only state that's done something like that. Now, why is that important? Because it gives us some interesting legal standing with the U.S. Supreme Court. And we're also while I, I'm definitely a critic of the overreach of the Commerce Clause being used to justify the mandate, um, something that we also very much we think is extremely important in this is that you know the Constitution also has language very specific to citizenship and more specific to due process that if you're going to take away liberty and property there has to be some form of due process involved. In this case we feel as citizens with that unique standing that those things are fundamentally inhibited and we want the U.S. Supreme Court to hear our case on this. What are you guys polling at now? Uh, polling is about uh, last public policy polling just released something last week um, and it polled at let's see 55 26 I believe uh, 55 we were winning 26 and 21 percent of voters were undecided if the individual mandate in Obamacare or at a state level is repealed or you know what does that mean for the other elements of Obamacare under your understanding or interest in this there is an interesting uh, ruling from one of the judges in Florida as it was coming up through the federal court system if you remove the individual mandate as the means to compel participation in this entire thing that's the keystone of the entire bill, you could actually dismantle the whole bill at that point. So we, we can't control that, but the courts uh, may rule in that direction. Um, and certainly we, we're advo huge advocates of health care reform, um, but we like a, more of a free market approach mm -hmm. to getting those things done rather than compulsory participation in a system. You're a uh, big player in the Tea Party in Ohio. People are talking about similarities between the Tea Party and the Occupy Wall Street movement. Do you see a similarity there? And is there anything that the Tea Party might learn from the occupiers or occupants and vice versa? Yeah, I, I, learning is an interesting thing. I think, uh, you know, I sympathize with the, with the Occupy people from this standpoint. They're sensing, and we know it too, I think every American knows it, the system's broken. Um, but it's broken for different reasons than I think their prescriptions um, are, are saying that, that how they should be fixed, how, how their solutions. Um, I, we completely agree, and I think most people do. Um, I was certainly somebody that was not happy to see TARP take place. Um, that was a, a very, very fundamental infringement in free markets. Um, it created a lot of the current problems that we have now. Um, I think we've perpetuated this idea of too big to fail for far too long. Um, and they're feeling that too. You know, they're interpreting it differently. But certainly the idea of corporatism or corporate statism um, is alive and well in the United States and, and banks and big business have gotten way too dependent on government, government favors, government lobbying favors. Do you see a way of uh, that the Tea Party people might reach out to Occupy Wall Street? Or do you think that after that initial kind of revulsion at the bailouts, you know, really there's very little in common. Un unless the prescriptions for solutions change. Uh, I mean, that's really where things seem to divert. It seems that their answer to things is uh, confiscation of wealth, 
um, which we would obviously fundamentally disagree that that's the route that you should go. Um, we'd advocate for legitimate and true free market systems um, rather than what we have right now. Um, and we think that capitalism, when it is true capitalism, um, it's, it's, it's risk and reward. Legitimate risk and reward is it's great for everybody. We've been talking with Chris Littleton, a Tea Party leader and one of the uh, head honchos behind Ohioans for Healthcare Freedom. Chris, thanks for talking. Great. Thanks so much, Nick. I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV.